che è stato povero, che si è costruito da solo, si interessa di calcio, ama la vita, ama divertirsi. Silvio Forever, or decoding the irrepressible ascension of Italy's head of government. It's a documentary film out recently that includes the women and counted on Silvio Berlusconi's long and winding path, personal, political and legal. Sono invincibile. There's a bit in the film where he says, I've changed the lives of Italian women because they didn't used to know what to do in the afternoons. They were doing the ironing in front of black and white television programs which were very boring. And he brought in television that was fun, different. And bit by bit he transformed the women who watched into voters. These voters over the past 30 or so years have become the foremost consumers of television programs whose way of portraying women, whose image of them, has become so widespread that it is commonly accepted as normal. Lorella Zanardo is fighting against that image, traversing Europe presenting her documentary, The Body of Women. She also put it on the internet two years ago, where the viewing figures have surpassed three and a half million. Italy right now is a fairly unique case. It's unique in the model being held up. Let's remember that this is in privately owned and publicly owned television, where woman is represented almost exclusively as a woman for sale, as merchandise, a body as an object. Perché accettiamo questa umiliazione continua? Perché non ci occupiamo dei nostri diritti? We are now in the offices of Lele Mora, Italy's king of casting and Berlusconi's close friend. Suspected of providing him with women, Mora will stand before the judges in the latest Berlusconi sex allegation scandal, Rubygate. But we're here because a lot of television stars have come through this agency. La sensualità, la bellezza, la prosperosità. Sensuality, beauty, prosperity. I think they go on stage because that's what the public wants. But that isn't to say it's in bad taste. Even less so, because no woman is forced to do it. If she believes she has the chance, the gifts, qualities, also the gift of being sexy, because otherwise it doesn't make sense. Woman was born of Adam. She was born the fruit of sin, and sinning can feel good. We can sin in a clean way. Being, as Mora puts it, sexy helped launch Danny Sanders' career as a media set showgirl. She was recently promoted weather presenter. I can't complain. Everything's fine. I get work, I earn money, I can also help my family in Rio de Janeiro, my mother and sister who aren't very well off. So I've got nothing to complain about. Everyone's free to do as he likes in life, so I'm fine. One third of young people in Italy are unemployed. In such a job market, whatever personal resources and natural assets can help lead to success come into play. Bianca Bicali, a sociologist, is incensed that women with more educational qualifications than men nevertheless find their professional prospects more restricted. I'm conducting a study of job adverts, and when you look at them, what are women being asked for? Before anything else, it's good-looking. What use is good-looking for a computer engineer, for example? It's nonsensical. 
In the media, it's very easy to create the image of the man in charge who rules the world. With this symbolic woman, object of consumption, the easiest way. The body of the woman is the most accessible symbol of success, of subjugating, being in control. Subjugation, being under someone else. Daniela Santanque is not having any of that. She entered politics around 15 years ago, climbing the ranks of the extreme right. Then two years ago, she joined Silvio Berlusconi's party and today is one of his closest advisers. This talk surrounding the image of woman in the media, she scoffs at it. Listen, if I were to win the Nobel Peace Prize, the newspapers would say, Daniela Santanque, who wears stiletto heels and low-cut dresses, has won the Peace Prize. This would be to say what? That women in the third millennium still have this cultural burden stuck to them. It's not so bad if you're a bit stupid. As long as you don't squeeze them too hard, that's even better. And they prefer us horizontal rather than vertical. But there's nothing original in what I'm saying about how men think. Berlusconi is an expression of the average Italian and European man's thoughts. That way of thinking helped fast-track model Mara Carfagna into Berlusconi's government. Carfagna has a degree in law. She's been Minister for Equal Opportunity for three years now. She said she was too busy to talk to us. Even her critics respect her work. Equal male-female opportunity for a lot of Italians has a hollow ring to it in a country ranked low in the World Economic Forum listing. Last February, more than a million women and men demonstrated in protest throughout Italy under the banner, if not now, when? Fed up with an image they find degrading, this group is also fighting against employment insecurity for women in Italy, where the inactivity rating is Europe's highest behind Malta, while they beat all European records for home and family workload. The position of women has regressed everywhere in Europe in the past few decades. European societies have done a lot, especially in terms of social assistance. In a lot of countries it works much better than in Italy. But we find it's an incomplete revolution, it's not finished. Now is the time, because otherwise when, to apply that to the whole of Europe, to bring this revolution to maturity. Such a revolution cannot happen without men. Among those who demonstrated in February were the association Masculine Plural, which beyond solidarity with women insists on a need for men to affirm their own identities, and it fights against belittling stereotypes in a male-dominated culture. There's a widespread image today that says a man's dream can be realized through the markets, money and power. It spreads a dream of permanent female availability, saying there are so many women at your disposal. I think we might perhaps aspire to something more. Rather than the availability of women, we should aspire to meet feminine wants. Feminine desire enriches my own experience, my own sexuality and my relation towards women.